the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So when it says it on the sixth month, that was the sixth month that uh, Elizabeth was being pregnant. As we know, it's been 400 years since God even spoke to man. There have been a, there have been a, a drought of communication, more or less. Until he, spoke to us, until he spoke to Zechariah. And then at that point, Zechariah didn't believe, didn't have the faith. And Gabriel shut his mouth and told him that you wouldn't be able to speak until that child was born, which we know that that, that child would be the forerunner of Jesus and would be named John the Baptist. So now, she's six months pregnant now. That same angel, Gabriel, is coming to another woman. Or another girl, let's just say that. And he comes to the uh, into the city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now, Nazareth, as we know, is the birthplace of David. That's about it. That's that was its claim to fame, more or less. And if you look at Nazareth and the Galilee, you've got Jerusalem. Now that's the that's the hub. That's the holy hub right there. Right. Uh, north of Jerusalem is Samaria. And what, what have we read in the Bible? Yeah. Jews wouldn't even go through. They'd go around Samaria. They hated Samaritans, didn't, and Samaritans didn't like them. So they would even go around to get around Samaria to take the long way around. Galilee was above that. That's where Bethlehem, that's where Nazareth was. So, it's like they were, literally, they were in the sticks. They were what we are to Charleston, what West Virginia is to New York. <laughs> Nowhere where a king would be born. No. No. Not by our standards. No. But that's where, but if you read this Bible, and you study this Bible, you will know that God works in impossible. Yeah. Because he wants you to know that there's not a doubt, that man's not in it, that it is all him. Yeah. That's where our faith comes in. Right. All right. Well, and, and talking about Nazareth, we even we even have, and it was it wasn't the good part, you know. Like sometimes, you know, Ashford has always had the the was the rough name of uh, Boone County, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, oh, you're from Ashford. <coughs> you're from that hole. Yeah. You know, I always tell them, you know, got Lens Creek, got Drawney. There's this hole. There ain't nothing over here. If you don't live here, you don't need to be over here. <laughs> because there's nothing over here for you to come see. <laughs> Unless you worked here, you... <laughs> and then, even when we went to Sherman, and that's what it was. I mean, oh, you're from over at the hole. That was the first time I ever saw somebody, you know, even told me the hole. And they said, there ain't no, nothing over there. And I thought to myself, well, it, it's my home. That's right. Come and see. That's where I come from. Oh, yeah. That's where I was raised. Right. There's more churches in this hole than in, in, in <laughs> most counties. Thanks, thanks to God. <laughs> but like Nathaniel said to Philip yeah. when he invited him to be Jesus, Jesus the good. prophet from yeah. Nazareth, he said, Nazareth? Yeah. Can he say good, good come from Nazareth? Amen. The whole? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus did. So in verse 27, he said, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So she's a spouse. She's betrothed to Joseph. And betrothed is, is identical. More or less, you're married. But you don't have... It, it's, it, it was a... Sometimes you can have the uh, two families betroth two kids at the age of two if they wanted to. Like, my baby's pretty, your baby girl's pretty. They would betroth them. But normally, a betrothal would last about 12 months. And in that 12-month period, the man would 
build a house or get things arranged right. for his bride. He was it was like a getting ready to do, and they didn't have much contact, and uh, they either one wasn't sociably active because they were betrothed to each other. So it was uh, even in the betrothal period, you could be divorced and not be married. So we read in the Bible that you know the, the woman was a widow. She was. Uh, She's betrothed. She was had been in betrothed, and her husband died, and she was a widow, even though she wasn't didn't go through the marriage uh, ceremony and the, the consummation. So that's what betrothed meant, and that's and that's where they were in their time period. And it says the angel came unto her and said, "Hail, thou that art highly favored." The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. So you had the angel of the Lord, Gabriel, come to, him, to her yeah. and, and say, you're going to have a child. You know, First, she was shocked. You know, it would be a shock to her. And told her that she was highly favored among women. Not above women. Hmm. Among women. Right. A, lot of, a lot of religious sects want to put Mary up high. They want, they'll pray to her. They'll, they'll worship her. They'll, and then you ask them why and it's said, one, one explanation was that if you ask Mary to ask Jesus, how could Jesus refuse the mother? It's good in ways. Okay. <laughs> but that's not what Jesus... I'd go to him myself. <laughs> Jesus is our... Uh, he's our interpreter. He's our... He's, he's the one that sits on the right hand right. side of the he's Father, right. not Mary. Mary... We give all the respect in the world that she was favored among women. One, because she was betrothed to Joseph, which was in the lineage of David. She had favor because, we, if you could read on, she, she had God in her heart. Mm -hmm. She knew the word. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and she'll rely on that word to get her through this. Mm -hmm. Because this, this was a blessing, but at the same time, this was going to be, this was an ordeal for a woman to have to go through. Mm -hmm. So, it, it was a time that was critical. It was a time of joy because God is officially announcing the birth of his son. Right. Jesus Christ. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus. Yahweh. Joshua. 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 <laughs> this is God in the flesh. This is something that no man had no part in. He, Jesus came to represent us and he came to identify with us. Mm -hmm. He came to identify himself with our fleshly bodies. He already, he knew what heaven and splendor was and he came to earth to <coughs> represent us on the cross. That was his job. When he came here, it wasn't going to be a glorious time. It was he had a job to represent us and to identify with us. So that when we look at our situations and when we pray and he makes intercession with us, he tells the Father, I know what they're going through. I know the pain that they feel, but they are mine. And I love them. And they need us. So it was... It was 
It was a time that the world would be changed forever. Yeah. yeah. Right. It says, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God Where shall give go? into him the throne of his father David. There has never been a man in all history that has the name so high as Jesus Christ. Amen. No other name. No other name. No other name. <laughs> Every man that has ever been born up until this day and, and that will ever be born will not have the reputation and the power of Jesus Christ. When he was there on that earth, they... <clears throat> You could talk about King Herod, Alexander the Great. These were all great, great men and, and had power throughout all of history. And there's been men who's tried to raise up and, and rule the world, but not one has the power Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He is the all living God. King of kings. King of kings. Lord, Lord. He is God in the flesh. No man will ever go higher than him. The Bible says that when he returns, every knee and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord and Savior. Yeah. And that will be a fact. Right. Yeah, amen. But we, we, we whitewash or we water everything down to where Jesus is just a figure in, a, in the Bible. Uh, in a manger. In a manger. He's born. He raised. He's a prophet. He did good. And he died, and some say, well, he rose from the dead and ascended. Some say, well, we don't know. But that's where our faith comes in. Yeah. You have to believe. Yeah. Right. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Mm -hmm. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. The angels tell us right now that when he comes, that's it. There's going to be his kingdom ne will yeah. never will never fade, will never mm -hmm. die out. That's and right. when he comes and, and brings his church back, we'll keep going on and on and on and on. The Roman Empire has ended. Ingus Kong has ended. Uh, Hitler tried to take it over. That's ended. Any power that has been on this earth will end. Uh -huh. Kings and kingdoms. Will They'll pass away. away. That's right. Roman thought there will never be nobody better than Roman. America's even thought we we that we are the greatest nation in the world. Which, one sense we are, but in moral morality and other things, we're we're losing it. His kingdom will not fade away, and it will last forever, and and it's yours. The only thing you've got to you do is have the faith in this virgin birth receive and the him. resurrection and receive him. Yeah. Amen. It's so simple. He said, the, 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 the children know. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, saying, I know not a man? That was, she, she questioned the angel. Zechariah questioned the angel, but Zechariah had doubt. He thought, my, my wife's old, you know, he, you know. And he was a priest. You know, his face should have been strong, and so Gabriel shut his mouth. But hers wasn't as, as doubt. It says, I haven't known a man. Because, you know, we all know that, you know, it takes two to make a child. She said, I haven't known a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, Amen. and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So he told her, he said, don't worry, honey. There's going to be no, no physical. Man ain't going to have nothing to do with it. The man of seed, man's seed, this is going to be God. 
He's going to overshadow it. God was going to humble himself to the low to pregnant a young girl. Mary, they said, was probably anywhere from 13 to 17 years old. I already told you that she, she came from Nazareth. She was in the sticks. So out in Nazareth, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, plentiful. It wasn't a rich culture. She was young, poor, female. Oh, but the lowest state. Because women had no rights. Mm -hmm. You had no voice. You were, your, your husband was, was your voice. You, anything that you got was from him. If he died, if you didn't have a son for, that, for the inheritance to go to, then you were sent to, her, uh, to his brother. If he didn't have a brother... You were a widow, and you were, you had nobody. The the, the body would uh, the government body would take all your assets because you couldn't own anything. You didn't own anything. It was the man. So here she is, anywhere from thirteen to seventeen year old girl, poor, and now she's going to be pregnant, which she is betrothed, which you. Can't be pregnant. It was even it wasn't customary for he, her and Joseph to be together. That was the part that you had to stay away for a year. And it, it, and, and you could see each other from afar. I, I would imagine. No, oh, here we go with that imagine. But you couldn't get on the phone. You couldn't get up and look at each other up and FaceTime. You're like, how you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? I'm all right. I'm missing. I'm missing you too. You separate. He was working. How can how how you think he felt when he's sitting there making this home for his wife and she's gonna have to come back and tell him, I'm pregnant. It's gonna break his heart. She has a lot of she's gonna have a a lot of a lot of weight on her. Here you are, got a young girl, old enough to have a child. She's got to tell her mom and daddy. Mm -hmm. She's got to tell her husband that she's that she's betrothed to. And then he had the legal right to have her stoned, have her cast out. This was serious. The Holy Ghost took over. All the pressure that this young girl came upon her all at once. And then at the moment, she's talking to Dave Gabriel. But in the back of her mind, thinking, you know, that's what she's saying, I don't, I don't know a man. And here he then she's up all the weight, pressure of the world. How many times have we been out there? Strange we get the same pressures. Yeah. The world doesn't change. It's the same pressure. You have the same girl that, that at her age is pregnant today. She's going to have the same pressure, except maybe not being stoned. But the girl had a lot of pressure on her. The weight. Here she was, a carefree, praying. She, she, we know that she knew the word. Mm -hmm. So here she was, happy-go-lucky. I'm betrothed. I got me a man that I love. And things are working out, and all of a sudden, boy, God wanted something from her. Yeah. He found her that she was highly favored among women. He says, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the six months with her who was called Barry. So he's telling her right then that you're not in this all by yourself. He said, remember your cousin couldn't have a kid? She's, she's got one now. But if you read on and you can see 
what at the end of this, what does Mary do? She first place she goes, she goes to Elizabeth. Why? Because she can confide in, in Elizabeth. They, we both talked to Gabriel. We both are pregnant. Mm -hmm. If anybody's going to believe her, mm -hmm. it's going to be Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Gabriel was telling her, "Listen, Ooh. I'm giving, Ooh. I'm giving you somewhere to go, to get you strength." And it says, and then he spoke to her and said, "For with God, mm -hmm. nothing shall Ooh. be impossible." That's a powerful little verse. But it is powerful in in all manner. If you if you study, it's just, it's sort of like the creed behind the creed. Mm -hmm. It says when uh, God told Abraham in Genesis that Sarah was going to have a baby, he couldn't believe it. The Almighty One said, "Nothing is impossible with God." <laughs> In Exodus, God tells Moses in the, yeah. that the people will enjoy bread and meat to eat. Moses doesn't see how this is possible. Numbers 11, 23, the Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord power limited? Mm. All right. Now you shall see whether my, world, or my word will come true for you or not. Nothing is impossible with God. Job, in the midst of all his sufferings, mm -hmm. kept Come his on, faith Toby. and said, Come I on, know Toby. that you can do all things <clears throat> and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Nothing is impossible with God. Jeremiah proclaimed, oh, yeah. O Lord God, Amen. it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing too hard for you Jeremiah 32, 16. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen. There's a trend here. And if you buy this little verse, if you buy into it, if you believe it, and you put it in your heart, Come and on, you put it there and say, nothing is impossible with God. Whatever is ailing you, whatever is hurting you, whatever is in, in your way, Nothing is impossible with God. He's telling that little girl, nothing is impossible with God. I put a lot on you. You've got a backpack, yeah, probably pack it up about 100 pounds on your shoulders right now. But don't you worry. Because I know that you've got the faith because you said, I'm here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be with you. I'm, I told you that you could, get, more or less, he gave him, uh, Elizabeth said, you're not alone. There's, there's going to be somewhere you can probably give you some comfort, but nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, what's she say? <laughs> Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. She let, more or less said, what's done is done. Like, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm in awe. This is probably a 13, at the most, they say 17. Here's a young girl saying, let it be. Let it be. Right. And to me, that's amazing. Because you think about, put yourself 13 to 17. We wouldn't have that maturity, right. that much faith in God. She did. Yep. Her attitude was, if God's in it, then who'd be against me? Yeah. That was her attitude. She, she turned it over to him. <laughs> so I'm telling you, nothing is impossible with God. Gosh, amen. And if you've got something, give it to him. Yeah. Because we see what happens with Mary. You know, we think, oh, Mary, Mary's going to have it rough. She's, you know, but what, what, what did God do? Well, the angel went to, went to Joseph, mm -hmm. talked to him. Yeah. Say, hey, listen, she's came to you. It's the truth. Yes. She's God's. That's her baby. Now, no matter what, and it's sort of, it's, it's so 
you know, we, we look at God and how he works. He takes the impossible and he makes it possible. He takes Joseph, who is the lineage of David, mm -hmm. and he takes him at the, what, the most perfect time of the betrothal. Because if he waited until they got married, they said, well, you know, that, that's just Joseph's kid. That's not, no, uh Oh, well, you see how he works. Mm. Mysterious, we, his ways is not our ways. Right. Much higher. Much higher, much humbler, but all the more and more seen. Yeah. That's God. Amen. So low, but so high uh -huh. that you can't cover it. But as I, if I had a message or, you know, if there's something that you, to get from this lesson is to remember the simple, nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Humble yourself, let him have it, he'll take care and he'll take care of it, <coughs> just like he took care of Mary. Mary never, never, never lost the faith in Christ. Mary's last words in this Bible that you know that, that was been recorded is when Jesus was uh, at the marriage ceremony. She said, "She looked at him and said, whatever he says, you do it.'" <laughs> yeah. And that's the way we remember Mary. Whatever he says, you do it, because her faith was strong. I and I don't put my faith in Mary. I don't pray to Mary. I pray to Jesus. She was a good woman. She she carried the Son of God. That's where Mary's job ended. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew who he was. He, at one time, they came to him and uh, they said, oh, how, how, how honor it would have been for the woman to carry. And he, he rebuked him and said, no. It ain't, it ain't about, it, it's about me. Uh. Everything, salvation goes through Jesus Christ. Give it to him. There's no other, nothing impossible. We'll go through these roads. We'll go through these hard times. But nothing is impossible. Just give it to him and have the faith in Mary.